Today's dish is a traditional Indian desi breakfast consisting of three components, chana, halwa and puri, a fusion of both sweet and savoury dishes to please the palate. Keep tuned to see how these three components are brought together. Enjoy. Hi guys, my name is Shwana and this is Cooking with Shwana. chickpea curry, a favourite amongst Asians, high in protein and a perfect vegetarian dish. One medium onion chopped up fine, one teaspoon of uh, ginger paste, one teaspoon of garlic paste, four green chillies chopped up fine, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of red chilli powder and uh, half a teaspoon of turmeric powder. In here there is one teaspoon of cumin seeds and half a teaspoon of fenugreek seeds which are roasted in a pan and then crush them in a pestle and mortar. This is one teaspoon of mustard seeds. In here I have four cloves and one inch stick of um, cinnamon and um, about six peppercorns, black peppercorns which are dry roasted and again crushed in the pestle and mortar. This is one teaspoon of brown flour. Right, this is 240 grams of passata. You can use chopped tomatoes if you want to. I have this in the fridge so I'm using this. And the main ingredients, 700 grams of boiled chickpea. Put a big pan on heat, high heat. I'm gonna add some oil. It's about six tablespoons. Be generous with the oil, okay? That's gone in there. I'm going to be adding the chopped onions. I'm going to be adding the mustard seeds. I'm going to be adding that um, cumin seeds that I've roasted with the cumin seeds so they can fry as well. Can you see the onions are turning golden now? The spices are frying. In goes the ginger, the chilies, and the garlic. Keep stirring. Make sure your heat is medium. Uh, the seeds can burn very quickly, so make sure that you're moving them around. They've got some moisture from the ginger and the garlic, so that will stop them burning. I'm going to add the gram flour. Gram flour, is, um, gram flour is a thickener, so it will thicken up the sauce. I haven't put too much in, just a teaspoon. One in there. I'm going to add the turmeric, the salt and the chilli powder. Can you see that the colour is very rich now? I'm going to make it even more richer by adding the tomato, the passata. The ground flour has had enough time to fry as well. In goes the passata. So, turn the heat up slightly now. Turn these uh, spices and the onions, tomatoes for about uh, four minutes. The oil has now separated. As you can see, that tells me that everything is nicely fried. Now I'm going to add the chickpeas. Okay, everything's coated. And then to this I'm going to add about um, four hundred ml of water. I'm adding boiling water just to save the time. 
bring it to the boil, then cover the pan and leave it to simmer on a very low heat for at least about 20 minutes. This has been cooking for 10 minutes. I'm going to add the clove, the peppers and the cinnamon sticks that I've roasted and crushed in the pepper stall and water. Just sprinkle that on top, give it a good stir and let it carry on cooking. The dinner is all cooked. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mash some of them, not all of them, just slightly mash them, the masher. Okay, that's it, just a little bit. That's done. The chickpea curry, ready to be plate on your. Now we're going to be making a sweet dish. It's a very traditional sweet dish. It's called a halwa. It's made out of semolina, clarified butter, sugar, nuts, raisins, all things that are high in calories, but very, very tasty when it's put together. Okay, now this is one cup of semolina. I am using this cup to measure everything so that even my water will be measured with this cup. And this is almost one cup of sugar and it's got two green uh, cardamoms in here. I've got here some uh, coconut, dried coconut, which I've sliced very thinly. There's about 30 grams there. There's 50 grams of almonds, which have been sliced very thinly and 40 grams of green sultanas. And we have one cup of clarified butter or ghee. I did this myself. I just uh, heated up the butter on very low and then just drained it off. And that was my clarified butter. Yeah, I've got a pan on. I'm gonna make the syrup first for the halwa. So I've gone to put the sugar in with the green cardamom and I'm going to put three cups of Boiling water, boiling water so it saves time while it's the, um, the syrup is being made. You've got to get your measurements right on this. Okay, so you bring that to the boil, make sure that the sugar is boiled, and let it boil for about five minutes on a medium flame. I put a, a frying pan to heat. I'm going to add the clarified butter. And I've also got in here um, another two green cardamoms so they can fry with the butter. Cardamom gives a really unique flavor. If you don't like the taste of cardamom, that's fine. You can uh, leave it out. And you can put saffron in if you want to. Okay, let this melt. Then I'm gonna add the semolina. Now you must make sure that you have this on low because you don't want to burn the semolina. Okay, mix it well. The semolina has to cook on a very low flame so that you don't change the color of the semolina. You don't want it to go brown so that your halwa is brown. You want it to cook it, cook it on a very low flame. Mix it well. And that could take up to about 15 minutes. Right, this has been uh, frying on a very, very low flame for the last 25 minutes. I've been stirring it constantly. Can you see the colour hasn't changed much? And that's what we're aiming for, trying not to change that colour. I'm going to add to this uh, my um, sultanas, green sultanas. and the almonds. The coconut slices. Stir those. I 
Okay, now when you add your syrup, make sure that you stand back because it will splutter. Add a little at a time, keep stirring so you don't get any lumps. Add all that liquid in. I know it seems a lot, but it will dry up as it thickens. And the smell is amazing. Lovely smell. Make sure there's no lumps. Turn down the heat. Keep stirring. Can you see how it's thickening? You can add a uh, green pistachio, chopped up fine, gives it a, lot, a nice colour uh, as well, you know, something green in there. Okay, now I'm going to leave this on a very low flame for at least five minutes and then it will be ready. Can you see how light and fluffy it is? What a gorgeous colour and I can tell you it has a fantastic smell. So we're now going to plate this up. Really separated, nice and fluffy. All those juicy sultanas. I'm going to show you how to make some puriyang. This goes with the chickpea curry and the halwa that's been made. When this all three, three things are together, it's called a desi breakfast. Very, very popular with the Asian community. A little balls with this dough. This dough is just plain flour with a little bit of salt and a mix of water. I've left it for half an hour. And now I'm going to make little balls and roll them out very, very thinly and fry them. Some people do use ghee. I'm going to be using oil to fry them. As I said, roll it out very, very thinly. So I'm still going to carry on with this. Try not to use too much flour because if you use too much flour, when it goes into the pan, into the oil, it will burn. So try and use the less flour as you can. The oil is nice and hot. I'm going to put this in very gently. Please be very careful. And with a pair of tongs, just gently turn it around. Can you see it all bubbling up? This is a puri we're making. Just leave it for a few seconds longer and then turn it over. They don't take very long to make. You don't want to fry them too much so that they become very crispy. Just enough for them to cook. And that's all it takes. So that the oil drains before I put it into, wrap it up in foil. Right, the puris have all, um, the, the oil has drained. Can you see they're not so greasy now? Nice and soft. So we're just going to put, normally there you have about two per portion, two per person in a portion. Very nice and light. This is a desi breakfast.